Hi, episode nine. All right. David Wheatley on David Wheatley's podcast. I already said episode nine. Thought I would book in that beginning and end episode nine. So great to be here. We've talked about a lot so far. I've talked a lot about it, but I think of it as we've talked about it. Please welcome the Clompers. I'm not going to say too much about them anymore, because I don't have much to say about the Clompers. The Clompers are the uh, people in the building who make noise with their feet and are sending messages to us. It's not exactly Morse code, it's Clomper code. We've talked quite a bit about social psychology and the influence of cultures on individuals, some on the indivi emphasis, uh, influence of individuals on uh, cultures, but uh, this episode is going to deal more with science, or in my case, pseudoscience. We've also talked about creationism, touched lightly on that, and also on the Big Bang Theory and the amoeba theory which is rather made up, but you can see the allegorical links. So uh, today we're gonna to talk about the harmonic overtone series. Why do we care about that? It's because this is how the harmonic concept of music has been created over the years. The basic concept is if there's a string, let's say eight feet long, and you pluck it, you pull it back, and then let it go so it snaps and it'll make a sound. That's because it's vibrating in its entire length. And that note that it makes is called the fundamental. Four, two, one. And then it also, invisible to the naked eye, is vibrating in halves. And right at the point where the halves connect, nothing is happening. It just sits there. And that is called the node, N-O-D-E. And then the entire string vibrates in thirds. So there are two nodes and in fourths so that there are three of them. And so on, fifth, sixth, seventh, till we get up to thirteenths, fourteenths, fifteenths, sixteenths, and the rest of them. And each of these lengths and sublengths create a note, even though it was only plucked one time in its entirety. And so the idea is that certain people, very special people, were able to listen to this vibrating string and hear the sub segments, the segments, not just the main one, but all the rest of them. Some people could hear those. And those are the people who started to actually sing and play those higher notes. I guess to show off, that would be my assumption. Well, I mean, why else would you do it? To show you have special insights, mysticism, whatever. And each of these indiv individual notes are called overtones. And so the theory is that I've come up with, maybe somebody else did too, and uh, fill me in is that a caveman, and we need to be respectful of gender in the caveman era, caveman, cave women, non-binary cave people, so that everyone's included, but somebody who had come across with a lower sounding voice would sing that fundamental note created by vibrating the whole string. And then in the halves, that note actually sounds what is today known as an octave above. So that would be somebody who sings in the higher register, generally speaking, a female. And those two people singing together would sing in octaves. And there was considerable music, especially at the male register, sung by monks in monasteries, because that's where monks hang out, I'm told, and that they would sing Gregorian chant. This is music that does not have instruments because it was thought that the human voice was more pure and therefore closer to God. And then later, boy sopranos were added because they sang the octave up, which is the equivalent of the string vibrating in half or the voice actually vibrating in halves. 
After that, people started singing the fifth above. I wish I could demonstrate these on a keyboard and maybe a, on a future episode when we have a keyboard, I will do so. But fifths and then fourths after that, considerable music was written and performed using this particular technique tied into the physics of the harmonic overtone series. Then a major third after that, a minor third. The seventh was added because people heard it by plucking that one string. The enlightened ones, the cognoscenti, were able to hear the seventh, which was slightly flatter than the seventh that we know now on the piano or other places. And then there was a ninth after that, and then an 11th, which was slightly sharp, which makes it an augmented 11th by today's standards. A 12th and then a 13th, which was slightly flatter than the 13th we have now. And I know those who are jumping way ahead are able to discern that the musical styles over the centuries worked their way up the harmonic overtone series. So Gregorian chant in the 1400s, 1500s, maybe earlier, early music, music of the Renaissance, added more notes until we ended up in the Romantic period and in the Neoclassical period. The Debussy and Stravinsky, where these added nine partials were used in the 13th uh, in jazz, and the 15th partial was way up there too. And... I like to think that as we progressed, we meaning the musical society of Aeternum, progressed from one century to the next, that the status quo, the group that was holding on to the way things were because they were vested and invested in it, were unwilling to countenance these incoming harmonic forces. And so the rebels, bringing in the new partials, had to slip them in to gradually get the public on their side. And the way this was done was by introducing a non-chord tone, these partials, in a fleeting way. Bring it in on a weak beat, a place in the bar where nobody really cared. Introducing these notes one little bit at a time. And then they would hold them, after those were accepted, they'd hold them for longer. But before that, I will slip in here that they would put them on a strong beat in the bar, but then quickly resolve them to the way it used to be, the chord tone, so the people in charge would not retaliate and try to crush them the way groups of people can crush individuals in the social psychology fourth category. So we have to be uh, appreciative of the individuals who go up against th these systems, go up against the status quo. Even the amoeba that decides to get up on the land was going up against the status quo of hanging out in the ocean all the time and just being chill and eating your plankton for you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So there was courage involved and a willingness to take these kinds of risks and being compelled to do so, which ties into the legend of the artist who is compelled to express themselves in the world and to go up against these, at times, mammoth structures of traditionalism. And so, through Debussy and Ravel in the early 1900s, on into, into jazz and jazz chords, and different kinds of jazz chords, we worked our way up the harmonic overtone series. As you go up above partial number 16, the individual notes become in between the notes on the piano, which gets us into microtones, quarter tones, and instruments have been created to play these notes. A lot of people find them disorienting because it's not what they're used to. And that's because these individuals are part of the status quo. Yes, deal with it. Sorry to say, you're part of the status quo. When electronic music came along and the ability to create pitches that went between the notes on the piano and every single pitch between the notes on the piano, a whole new realm of tones and harmonies were created 
and became available as tools for composers. This has uh, really caught on, not so much the microtones and the tones between notes, but the sounds and timbres of sounds that are available through electronic music have caught on big time in the, uh, the mass appeal. So I've got a lot more for you. I'm going to pause here. This concludes episode nine, but not before we talk about patreon.com slash David Wheatley. Oh yeah, that again. And you're becoming the philanthropist, the philanthropist you were meant to be by making a donation to this project to support our work. Email davidwheatley10 at gmail.com. We welcome your feedback. In fact, we can't wait to receive your feedback. I said it. And with that, I'm going to log on. Thanks for joining us. 